Okay, hey everyone, welcome to this training on creating a lead list using LinkedIn Sales Navigator. What I'm going to cover in this short training is a little guide to the Sales Navigator interface, uh, how to use the search fields on LinkedIn Sales Navigator, particularly to find leads and key decision makers. And then look, we'll look at creating a list of your first degree connections, so people that you already know and how we can kind of mark up notes on each of them. And then creating lists of our second and third degree connections and people who are in shared groups essentially building lists of people that you'd like to get to know and we'll start to touch on how you can get attention from the right people ensuring that they accept you if you reach out and connect with them in brief some people ask me you know do I need to use sales navigator can I just use regular LinkedIn because obviously sales navigator comes with a premium fee what I tell them is at this point it's worth using sales navigator at least for a free trial for the first month just to get used to the search fields that enable you to create highly targeted lists you don't need to keep using sales navigator forever but it's definitely worth using for at least for the free month of the trial essentially the more targeted you are, the more likely you are to find the right people and then the more likely you are to have conversations with the right people and, and essentially cut through to talk about your business or your service. If you do have a premium LinkedIn Sales Navigator, you are likely to get a higher acceptance rate and a higher connection to call ratio for a couple of reasons, partly because of the searches you create will be superior, so more targeted but also you'll be able to just add more people. So Sales Navigator just gives you a broader range of higher number before you get capped on how you, how you can add people and also added features such as like in mails and stuff like that. Essentially what you want is to generate calls with people who are likely to be your client and want to work with you and you want to refine that away from you know calls with people who'd like to just have a chat or just network with you and just get to know your work so because of this because of a refined list and being able to find the right decision maker then obviously you want to maximize your call to sale ratio LinkedIn sales navigator is a little bit more forgiving on the number of outreach messages you can send meaning that LinkedIn is less likely to restrict your outreach if you, than if you had just have a free version. But by all means, you can just use free LinkedIn um, to do a lot of these searches. But this is a guide on how to use Sales Navigator. All right, at this point in the training, what you should already know is who is your ideal client? So who are they by demographic and by psychographic? Meaning demographic is the normal kind of external markers of who they are by job title, seniority in the company, their skills, education, age range, anything like that. So we've really profiled them quite clearly on who they are and also in their psychographics. So what are their pressure points? What are their interests and passions and goals and challenges and pains and worries? And because we've gone through that process of really understanding that typical persona of person that we can help, we are able to craft this kind of client avatar, which is a kind of generalized John Doe or Jane Doe of who we're gonna outreach. And that's obviously based on our history of serving certain clients. We know that they're roughly a male or a woman in this kind of age range with this kind of job title and they're you know facing these kinds of challenges and pressures and all of that is going to help us to speak the language of our ideal client both by finding the right people and then crafting that outreach message. What we should also have already achieved at this point is a really clearly articulated offer so exactly you know the challenge you're facing the solutions you provide and the value offering that you provide that sets you apart from your competitors, so your USP or unique selling proposition. So at this point in the training, you should have a clear offer results statement. So I help B2B consultants win 10K to 100K clients in three months using LinkedIn and cold email, something like that. And if you don't have that formulated yet, then I would say just go back to earlier trainings and and make sure you've got that nailed down. What you should also have is an optimized LinkedIn profile. So if you haven't watched that training, just go and watch that, like how you can optimize your LinkedIn profile to land clients using LinkedIn. There's lots of great tips on, you know, your banner image, your profile picture, your headline, your about section, and everything so that within five seconds or 20 seconds on your profile, a new lead should be able to look at you, understand what you do, the value you provide, 
and then decide, yes, I'd like to connect with this person and I'm open to the conversation that could ensue. All right, so if we start to look at LinkedIn Sales Navigator, we're gonna look at these types of search filters. The main ones for leads, this is for individuals, is obviously job title and um, seniority, but we can also look by geography, their relationship to you, industry, the function within the company that they work within, the headcount particularly of the company, but also headcount of the, the department and then the company type. So there's a lot there that we can filter by, but there are other searches that we can narrow down by things like that if, whether they've changed their job recently or they're new to the company or whether they're active on LinkedIn or have posted on LinkedIn in the last 30 days. If they have shared experiences with you, such as attending similar events or being part of similar groups. Um, and then we can also look at Boolean searches. So let's go to LinkedIn and I'll show you what this means. Okay, so let's go over to LinkedIn over here. And what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to open up Sales Navigator here. What I'm going to go through is this document, which is one of the profiles for one of my clients who was reaching out to senior leaders for agile coaching and training. And I think what we decided was these were the job titles. So head of development, head of product, head of change. So if we look at LinkedIn Sales Navigator, if we come to the home section here, what we've got is our lead filters and our account filters. So you can flick between lead, which is individual, and account, which is company-wide. So let's look into lead. So what we're gonna do is go by job title. And what were our job titles? Head of development, head of product, head of change. So let me just search by that. Head of product, head of development, head of change, head of change management. So that's fine. We we'll just go with whatever um, categories LinkedIn is giving us. Okay, so then we want to just make sure that the job is current. So let's see if it's giving us that option here. Yeah, let's make sure it's current. Otherwise it could pull in people who've had this job in the past and well, obviously that's not helpful to us. So um, then we go by senior uh, seniority of VP and senior VP. So let's go here, seniority, and we can choose VP. I don't think senior VP is an option, so we could just use senior, there we go. Then we're going to go by industry. So we've got telecom, automotive, finance, info, and software development. So there's quite a few here. So let's go by industry. Okay, so let's go by industry. So we've got telecom. We've got finance, financial services, whoops, information technology, computer software, financial services, what was it? So we've got automotive, okay, I think that's all of them. Um, and what's critical to look at is this number here. So we would have started with about 200 million and as we've added more and more refinement this will shrink and then there's ways of playing with that. So the next one is geography, so we want UK, Ireland and Europe, so geography, let's go United Kingdom, Ireland, let's see if we can go with Eastern Europe, nope, West Central Europe, no, nope. okay, so let's try Europe. All right, so we can just go a bit broader with Europe, um, even though Ireland is part of Europe. So we want medium to large and even up to multinational size of companies. So this would be company headcount, I assume. Uh, so medium, not sure what you would classify as small or medium, but let's go 500 and up. 
so 1,000 to 5,000, 5,000 to 10,000, and 10,000 plus. Okay, so now we've got 4,000 results. So we're getting more and more refined by every search we go by. We also want people who are new to the role, new to the company, um, and recently moved company. Let's see if we can here try that. So years of experience, that's people who are new. And also let's look at years in current company, years in current position. So maybe one to two years here and one to two years in the current company. All right, so that's 26 results. What I might do is get rid of this one, which is relatively inexperienced people. Okay, yeah, so that's bigger. That's given us 490 results, which is quite a tight, which is quite a tight remit. So we'll just finish our search and see if we can expand it a bit. So we've got English and German as search as languages, profile language. Let's go by English. So right, German. There we go. Okay, not much change in the search style there. Then we want keywords, Agile, Scrum and Lean. So let's go via keywords a little bit like this. So this is where you can use Boolean search phrases and we can use keywords here. Okay, so that's kind of given us a slightly tighter result. And that's what keywords and um, this is Boolean searches. You can use or or not or but or and and things to create like a Boolean string. And then um, type of company, public, private. So usually we're just wanting the company type publicly held, privately held, and then obviously you can go into things like not-for-profits and people who are self-employed and things. Yeah, not, not a massive change to our search there. All right, now this is where we get our spotlights. Um, so you can look by connection or relationship, shared experiences and using LinkedIn recently. So this is un usually under spotlights here. So we want to see if they've posted on LinkedIn in the last 30 days. That will radically reduce our search. But what it does is it gives us the, the people who are definitely active on LinkedIn. So we know that they're going to be um, available on LinkedIn. The other ones are, they've been mentioned in the news. It can just give you something to say, personalized thing to say in the outreach they have a shared experience with you, it means they're probably in, a, in the same group or have potentially worked in the same company or even attended the same university as you. Or if, the, if you're looking for people who are just really brand new in their job, you can look at people who've changed jobs in the last like three months. But let's just use that one posted on LinkedIn in the last 30 days. Um, and the last one is relationships. So let's go connection. We want second degree group and third degree. Okay, so yeah, we're still around 60. Now, if this is too tight a search, what we could do is open it up a little bit more. So what we could do is we could either remove some of the restrictions. They could be new in their role, but not new in the company, for example. That might open it up a little bit and give us a few more options. Yeah, so this gives us a few more options here. Just remove the company type, for example, and just give it open to all types of companies with that um, type of company headcount. Maybe for the mid-range, we could add in another, the kind of largest companies there. Um, gives us only a few more. But I think you get the picture of like how you're building your search through all of these search filters and things. What I would recommend then is that you save your search and you want to give it a name that's meaningful to you. So I might say Agile Coaching UK and Europe and then give it today's date and then just save that search. 
So that means you don't need to repeat that process. You can always find that search again. But that gives you now the ability to go down and like further refine that search of 173 and look at each of these and decide are they desirable. So for example, if we're looking for um, head of development, head of product, head of change, okay, so product lifecycle management at this Ericsson. So that could be a could be very interesting for someone who is likely to be interested in agile transformation, head of IoT agile development, so somebody very relevant, senior product manager, um, senior VP electrification at Scania. It's, we might have to explore him a little bit more and see. Head of product analytics and strategy, head of DevOps. Okay, so these are quite senior people, but what we want to do is say <coughs> save them. So I've actually just selected eight out of 173 just for this exercise, but I can show you how then you can save that to a list. So let's create a list and we just say agile coaching uh, leads list. And you can always find these at the top of the page here where there's an account list and lead list. See, I've got my agile coaching and those eight of them there, but I can also find my save search, which is the agile coaching. And that was 173, I think people that I found, but essentially when you're creating your lead list, I would normally recommend that you find lists of say 500 or a thousand even because you want to be able to have enough people to reach out to and add. But once you've got this saved list and you're happy with them, you can just be connecting with them or viewing their profile, or you can go to your, um, go to your list from here. You could be um, looking at your list, checking out their company. You can be looking at other decision makers. You can be adding notes and things. And probably most importantly is you can connect them or message them directly. So if you have LinkedIn Sales Navigator, it gives you a certain number of credits and that means you can message them before even connecting. But I would preserve your credits for people that you really, really want to reach out to. And if, you, if possible, the most advantageous is just to connect with them and send them a brief message about, you know, hey, I, I really appreciate your work and I'm expanding my network. So let's connect and then you send the invitation. So LinkedIn allows you to send organically a hundred a week. So that's why I say you want to be creating searches of a few hundred because then you can be adding up to a hundred a week and be growing your network systematically with the right type of leads. In the next training, we're going to look at how you could create an account search. And what that means is really, if you're looking within companies for key decision makers, you could create account searches instead of lead searches. So instead of finding hundreds of product development managers, we might find hundreds of companies that suit your ideal profile. And then you can go into each of the companies and and find multiple people within the company to connect to. And that's more advantageous if you're looking for whole accounts to add to your company. Um, so you're really targeting a, to win a company as a client rather than an individual as a client. And then of course, what's coming up next is how to craft your outreach message and how to engage with people once they're connected, but that's in other training videos. So I'll finish this training video here now and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.